Physical models of mathematical objects can be really cool. People can hold them in their hands to study for research purposes, to pass around a classroom, or to educate the public about mathematics. They can provide geometric insight and show aspects of mathematical structure that may not be clear from diagrams and formulas. Or you may want to make some just because they're fun to play with. For example, did you know there's a way to hold this fractal structure, a Sierpinski tetrahedron, so it projects down to a square? Its fractal dimension is exactly 2, and seeing how a 3D printed model exactly covers the plane gives some insight into that. So in this video, I'll survey techniques for making your own 3D printed models of mathematical structures. The technology is evolving all the time, so this isn't a how-to, and I'm skipping over details. Let's start with surfaces. Sometimes you have a parametric form for the surface bounding the object you want to make. For example, to make the solid torus, we describe the torus surface. In this 3D surface generator program, we can create a torus by giving parametric equations for x, y, and z. Hmm, boring. So let me personalize it with an extra ripple, say the 20th harmonic at an amplitude of 0.2, for some visual interest. A little better. We'll export it to a file that contains a polygonal approximation to the surface. We check it with an STL viewing program because there are lots of little things that can go wrong. I'll make this on a 3D printer I have at home. It calculates the cross sections of my object for many values of z and builds each layer on top of the next. Melted plastic squirts out of a tiny nozzle to build up the layers. I have it set here to also print a fragile scaffolding beneath the object, which supports it during construction. When complete, I can break away the scaffolding to have my own personal wiggly torus. Not bad. Going back to the software, Instead of a parametric surface like the torus, you might have an implicit definition, meaning you're interested in the surface at which some function of x, y, and z is zero. Here's a nice triply periodic surface. It's really confusing trying to understand the ins and outs and what connects to what, so a 3D model might really help here. If I export this and view it, you see there are two sides to the surface and it has a boundary. So to build it, I need to thicken this from a surface to a slab that contains volume. Many programs can thicken a surface. I'll demonstrate with one called Rhino. There's a command to extrude it to a slab, and I can adjust the thickness until it looks just thick enough to print. On my little machine, this takes a couple of hours to build, and the result is really cool to hold. Seifert surfaces also make lovely 3D models. These are something like surfaces you would get by dipping a knotted wire into soap. The Seifert view program can generate them, relax the knot, and output 3D files. If we take, say, the 2.5 torus knot and make a surface that spans it, we get this lovely form. I 3D printed it and painted the knotted edge red, leaving the spanning surface white. It's pretty cool. Similarly, here's the Seifert surface that spans the Borromean ring linkage. The three rings are locked together, but no two are linked. I built it and painted the three links in the three primary colors. I should mention that there are also color 3D printers, which could make this directly with no need for manual painting. This one really is a beautiful thing to hold and appreciate. If you're interested in more advanced mathematics, you might use programs like Mathematica or Maple, which have many built-in functions and can manipulate complex numbers. I can make any specialized model that occurs to me, for example this checkerboard based on the Gaussian primes. I'm a fan of polyhedra and polytopes, so I'll show one more program, called Stella, which manipulates polyhedra and their stellations. From its library, I choose the cube octahedron, generate its dual, the rhombic dodecahedron, then extend the face planes to create its stellations. I've exported the first stellation of the rhombic dodecahedron and 3D printed some copies to explore how they pack space together without gaps or overlaps. Stella also has a 4D option, with the database of higher dimensional polytopes it can manipulate. I'll show you how easy it is to create a beautiful Schlegel projection of the 120 cell as a final example. I load the 120 cell from the library, expand it to separate the dodecahedra from their neighbors, delete the original dodecahedra, and also delete the pentagonal prisms that connect their faces. This leaves the skeleton of the edges of the 120 cell solidified as a volume. For aesthetics, I'll import it into Maya where I can smooth it to have rounder organic surfaces. I'm applying an operator to subdivide the faces and soften the edges. The design is too complex for my home 3D printer, so I'll send it out to be printed. Two weeks later, 
A delivery truck comes with the box. Here's my smooth 120 cell. Look at those lovely dodecahedral tunnels. Awesome.